Hello my fellow gamers and welcome to a guide on how to play Against the Storm, a roguelike city builder from the indie developer Eremite Games, who I want to thank for sending me an advanced copy so I could prepare this guide for launch day. My name is Peter and let's begin with the basics. When you start each new settlement, you are provided with limited resources and a few villagers of each race, these being humans, beavers and lizards. The very first thing you want to do after pausing the game is to stop the use of coal at the local heart, as this is not a resource you can find easily, and it has better uses. Next, you want to look over the starting forest glade to see what resources are present. Usually, this will be a patch of one type of food and some clay. Then, you want to look around your settlement where all the other glades are, the ones shrouded in fog. Note the location of all the glades which do not have skulls in them, as those are the ones you want to explore. Pick the first building option and the first road type, which is paths, as they do not require any resources. Set the path around the heart and the main settlement stockpile, as this boosts villagers' movement speed. Extend the path to the nearest new glade and from the second build option menu, choose the woodcutter's camp. Rotate it to face the forest and place it at the end of the road and next to the forest line separating your glade from the next ones. In the build menu, check what other buildings you have available and then click here to use the reputation points to unlock new ones. As planks are one of the main building materials, I will choose the carpenter's blueprint over the supplier. Because the forester's camp collects food from vegetation, and that is what I have in my starting glade, this is my next pick. Lastly, because I have already picked the carpenter for plank production, I skip the lumber mill for now and go with the furnace. From the camp build menu, I choose the new forester's camp and set it next to the patch of food it can harvest. Lastly, the stone cutter's camp goes next to the clay pile. Now you can unpause the game so the villagers can construct these buildings and paths. Remember that unemployed villagers are the only ones who construct buildings. Once the woodcutter's camp is finished, add all the beavers as woodcutters because they excel at that job. Use the green axe with a plus sign to choose exactly which trees to cut as to get through to the new glade. Once the forger's camp is finished, add a lizard and a human to work in it and collect vegetables from the patch. When a new icon shows up in the top right, it brings you some fresh choices. These are cornerstones, basically bonuses granted to you by the queen. At the start, it is best to go with the simpler resources as you will be able to use them sooner. Here I choose the grain delivery line because I do not have farmable land yet, nor have I unlocked the farm, so this will be my only source of grain in this settlement. Once the stonecutter's camp is finished, add a human and a lizard to work in there. Orders are your next choice, and you have to be careful here. Picking an order depends on are you able to deliver the requirements, and do you want or need the rewards. The exploration order is easy to finish because you would be doing that anyway by exploring new glades. Trade post is also easy as it is always unlocked and you need that building, but getting the extra amber is costly. The reward scouts pack is a really good boost when completing tasks inside new glades, so my choice here is the exploration order. Next orders are picked using the same logic. The point of these orders is that by completing them, you gain reputation points, which fill up the blue bar on the bottom of the screen and lead to the mission's completion. On the other side is the red bar, which if filled full, leads to losing the mission. This happens eventually if you do not fill up the blue bar first. Once you have sufficient wood, which you can check by clicking up here on the left, you need to use the build option for housing and make shelters for your villagers. Each shelter takes in 3 villagers, so for the starting 9 settlers, you need three such buildings. The more villagers you have, the more shelters you will have to build. There are also homes specific to each species, but that you have to unlock. When the woodcutter gets through into a new glade, you will unlock new resource piles. Depending on the buildings you have unlocked, you might be able to exploit these. To cut through to even more new glades, you have to once again direct the woodcutters using this tool and marking specific trees for them to cut. If they cannot reach a tree, it is marked not in gold, but grey. That means you have to click on the woodcutter's hut and move it closer to those trees. This action has no cost. In this other glade, we find a source of food exploitable by two different buildings and a patch of farmable land. Usually, you will need to cut more trees around that land to make room for the farm as it has a limited range. The more nature you explore and exploit, 
the more will the forest be hostile to you. This is a problem because your villagers are scared of angering the forest and gain negative resolve for it. Things like additional woodcutters, villagers and exploration will keep increasing the forest's anger level. Because constructing a carpenter requires planks, which that building produces efficiently, you have to first construct another one which does so far less efficiently, the crude workstation. It is best to have it close to your main storage building for faster resource delivery. Exploring big glades often opens up abandoned caches. These have specific requirements, like tools for example, and give one of two rewards. It is advisable to pick the ember and reputation points more often than not, as these lead to winning the mission. With three glades now explored, our first order is complete. Delivering it gains us five tools and the bonus to the worker's capacity to move goods to glades in mini missions like the abandoned caches provide. Now, once again, move the woodcutter's hut in the range of the next unexplored glade and repeat the whole process. Because we filled the reputation bar enough, we get a bonus from the queen, a choice of unlocking one of these two buildings, smokehouse or the brewery. Because we have a standing order to produce mush soup, I will choose the brewery. After an in-game year passes, you will get two new boons from the queen, a choice of new villagers and a new cornerstone. As for the villagers, pick beavers because they are good at working in industry buildings. While for the new cornerstone, I will choose the egg delivery line so I have a constant supply of food and crafting material for more advanced food recipes. Once the crude workstation is finished, use beavers or humans to work there to produce planks and bricks. You do not need fabric yet, so deselect it. If one of your camps has no more piles to pick resources from, use the move option and search the glades for resources which get gold squares under them as this means they can be harvested by that type of a camp. Place the camp near them. If no such resource piles can be found, Use the right click to remove workers from that building for the moment. When choosing more orders, use the same logic as before. Pick the ones whose requirements you can fill during that mission with the buildings and resources you have at hand. Now you see why we kept coal from being used up. Coats are a very valuable good as they prevent villagers from losing resolve in the never-ending rain. Getting them as a reward instead of producing them yourself goes a long way in keeping the villagers happy early on. Also, try not to have too many orders which require the same goods, as you will need a very long time to complete them, and you are in a race against time in each of these missions. For that very reason, and once you have more villagers, you will need a second woodcutter's camp, which you should place next to more regular glades you want to explore. Now if you have found this guide useful so far, please remember to hit that like button, comment what else would you like me to explain about the game, and subscribe to see that video when I post it. When a food patch is exhausted, move the camp, which has nothing to collect, to a new food patch, which the camp can exploit. Draw a new road to it to speed up food delivery. You can place additional small storage buildings next to these far-off camps or farms to have short delivery trips and increase efficiency. When you have a lot of wood and an excess of one resource or high goods production, you should construct a trading post, so you can trade away those items for others you lack. Trade is done on a barter system where regular resources are less valuable than produced goods or packaged materials. Since you can't always have a production of each resource or goods, learn to trade what you can produce in large quantities for what you need, but cannot produce or harvest on your map and current settlement. Traders do not arrive during storms and take a while to come back, so make trades while planning ahead for large quantities. The brewery we unlocked some time ago should now be constructed because we need to produce more advanced food recipes, which will increase villagers' resolve and make them happier when they eat. Finishing orders and clearing small encampments in glades will result in another gift from the queen in the form of a building blueprint. When offered any type of farm, like the herb garden, that is the superior choice, as it can produce far more than any camp as long as you have farmable land on the map. When the brewery is finished, add lizards or humans to work in it on producing mush soup from the resources you have available. You can change ingredients by clicking on them and choosing another one from the radial menu. Once you trade for barrels or pottery, you can enable the production of drinks at the brewery and these will help boost the villagers' resolve. You can inspect their stats by extending the info panel using the small triangle next to their icons in the top left. When you have extra construction materials, use them to construct the carpenter or sawmill depending on which blueprint you chose, because these buildings produce planks far more efficiently than the crude workstation. 
A choice between a bakery and a smokehouse is not really a choice, because eventually you will want to have both producing more advanced food recipes and luxury goods like incense for consumption. To be able to make fabrics, you first need a scavenger's camp to collect plant fiber from such a patch of resources. Once you have collected plant fibers, enable the production of fabrics in the crude workstation so you can construct buildings which you require it. You can add new hearts to outposts which are further away from the main one so the villagers spend less time getting to it to warm up. This and better foods will help you weather the seasons of heavy storms when the resolve of your villagers will be tested and their happiness will drop dangerously low. You must make sure to construct buildings like the bakery and produce even more complex foods in it for all the races, as they do not all eat the same foods or like the same complex foods. When you see the trader come in with tools, get all of them, as they are very often the requirements for clearing camps in normal glades. In each new heart, add a lizard to work there, as his race produces a bonus when working there. Burn only wood. After the bakery is finished, employ lizards to work there and make sure you can produce the complex foods by changing ingredients to the ones you have plenty of. The library will help boost the happiness of your villagers, so it too is a good investment of resources. Leave a lizard to work there and see if you can provide incense by trading for it or producing it locally, in a smokehouse which you need to unlock and construct. The makeshift post is the building you need if you want to produce packs of materials or provisions which will often show up as requirements for fulfilling orders. This will consume a lot of planks and fibers, so watch what you have more of to spend. The smokehouse is another place which will spend a lot of wood, so here you have to be careful that you don't spend all of it and end up with no wood for hearts. If the main heart goes dark, you will lose the game. Have your beavers working in the carpenter or sawmill to produce planks for very little wood. Planks are required for both package materials and building construction, so you will need lots of them. If you play on any map for too long, the negative stats will keep stacking and you might find yourself in a situation where villagers are going to start leaving. This is why it is not smart to play too long on any map. Get those reputation points from glades and abandoned camps or from fulfilling any orders you can. A perfect storm of high forest anger and a thunderstorm will see your lizards resolve plummet and they might start leaving. On the other hand, if the weather is not too bad and you have produced many types of complex foods and luxury goods, built things like the library or tavern, you will gain the highest possible happiness and resolve of your villagers. You can see this as a blue happiness bar next to their icons on the top left. To ultimately win the mission, you must fill the reputation bar to the maximum. Between finishing orders and investigating camps in explored glades, you will be able to collect enough reputation points to do just that. The better you do in each mission, the higher the level you achieve for your queen and the smoldering city. This is your refuge during the worst type of storm which is slowly approaching. In the smoldering city, you can buy upgrades for the whole campaign and see what deeds have you unlocked. These deeds grant extra experience points when acknowledged. And that concludes this basic gameplay guide on how to play against the storm. For more of my videos, check out these cards on the screen. When I post more videos about this game, I will add them here. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!